self-inflicted wounds. They've been a way to escape military service throughout countless wars, past and present. Self-inflicted wounds were of particular concern during World War I. Millions of men were drafted in World War I to fight in harsh, protracted trench warfare. The conditions of trenches could be hellish, where men waited out their turn to go over the top to be cut down by enemy machine gun fire. For some men, self-injury was the only way to escape such a fate. It is impossible to know exactly how many self-inflicted wounds there were during the war, but there were military trials that dealt with the matter. In the British Army, 3,894 men were found guilty of self-inflicted wounds during World War I. The popular belief was that these men were frequently shot, but typically they'd be sent to work camps or prison, after an often intentionally humiliating imprisonment near the front lines. The French army was less lenient for self-inflicted wounds. They in fact shot twice as many of their own soldiers as the British did. French executions numbered between six and 900 men between the years of 1914 and 1918, mostly for mutiny or desertion, but some for self-mutilation. One French soldier, Francois Laurent, 29 years old, was executed in the first few months of the war. He received a bullet wound to the hand while serving in the trenches. Evidence against Laurent was weak but trials were quick and designed to set an example. Laurent spoke poor French. He was unable to testify and was executed. Bullet wounds to the hands and feet were viewed as suspicious. Such injuries were investigated by traveling medical boards. They checked for things such as powder burns that might indicate a weapon was fired pressed against the skin. If a man's injury was suspicious, they'd receive a tag labeled SIW for self-inflicted wound. They'd receive medical treatment, but often separate from other soldiers, and shame during any investigation. Many men, of course, received legitimate wounds to their hands and feet during the course of the war, which meant men not only had to fear being injured, but also believed. I smell something fishy, and I'm not talking about the contents of Baldrick's apple crumble. It's unknown how many men got away with self-inflicted wounds or faking illness, a.k.a. malingering. Men in the trenches became creative as they became increasingly desperate. Men tried to shoot themselves through objects like tins of beef or sandbags to lessen the injury or make the injury seem more convincing. Some men would rub chemically infected soil into their eyes and hope for temporary blindness to get off the line. Getting the severity of the injury right was no easy task. A bullet wound to the hand or foot didn't guarantee being sent home if the wound could be treated in a field hospital. In some cases, men simply attempted to be shot from an opposing trench and hoped for the best. William Holbrook of the Royal Fusiliers witnessed one fellow soldier carrying out a self-inflicted wound in 1916. He later spoke about it. This fellow, he was a, I don't know, he was a conscript or what, he wasn't a, wasn't a regular soldier. I liked him, but a, he, unusual sort of chap. He said, I can't stick this, he said. He said, I'd sooner be dead than stick this. So anyway, one morning, the hell of an explosion back of our, my trench, he put his hand under the steel helmet and put a Millsy's bomb on top and blew his hand off, lost his arm. He'd gone down to, from the bay, ran the back of the trench, and we was in the trench, you see, and he put his hand, I'm coming, put his hand on top of it, put, put his helmet on top of that, and pulled a pin out of the Mills's bomb and blew the end off. I don't know what happened to him. I know he, he's only about 22. Today, the trauma that drove these men to wound themselves is better understood. Post-traumatic stress disorder was only beginning to be understood in World War I, and was often referred to as shell shock. Psychological trauma could not be ignored during the war, and thousands of men were pulled off the line to be treated, but their treatments varied while the army struggled to address the issue. Some men, of course, faked the symptoms they witnessed in other men, but that didn't guarantee them kind treatment. In many cases, more army discipline was thought to be the cure. The time has come to get out of this madness once and for all. What madness is that? All right, I'm Johnny. Thanks for watching. Let's all remember that mental injuries are real and can happen to anyone. Check in with the people in your life and ask for help when you need it. We'll see you in the next one.